क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends in this video we are going to study how newton's rings are going to be utilized to determine the unknown wavelength lambda that is being used to show newton's rings and to determine the refractive index of the medium that exists between the plano convex lens and the flat surface at the bottom we all know from newton's rings experiment that the radius square of the newton's rings is equal to r multiplied by n multiplied by lambda divided by mu let us write down this expression so the radius of the nth ring is rn square is going to be equal to capital r the radius of curvature of the plano convex lens multiplied by the order which is going to be n or the number of the ring multiplied by the lambda there is a wavelength that we are going to utilize in order to observe the newton's rings and there is one more parameter that is there and then that is nothing but mu which is the refractive index of the medium that exists between the plano convex lens and the flat surface so if at all i wish to draw a figure over here the figure will look something like this and this and i'm using this plano convex surface to observe the newton's rings which i'm observing only two rings we are been showing out over here so the medium refractive index medium is this mu that is existing out over here lambda is the wavelength that is that i'm using in order to observe the newton's rings and r is the radius of curvature of this plano convex lens for simplicity purpose i am taking only two rings out of the pattern of rings that is actually being developed in the newton's rings pattern and here we are doing the reflection mode of the newton's rings interference pattern so r n square is equal to capital r into n into lambda upon mu mu of course is equal to 1 if it the medium mu of course is equal to 1 if the medium is air now this is the radius rn but to be more specific let us say that this is the radius of the this is the radius of the nth ring or this entire thing is the diameter of the nth ring how will this formula get changed we know that this will be equal to dn square divided by 4 and hence in terms of diameter this is going to be equal to dn square is equal to 4 into r into n into lambda divided by mu now what i do is i take the radius or rather i consider the diameter of all these rings the next ring will be this one the higher ring for example and this is going to be equal to let us say d of n plus m this is the diameter of the n plus n ring which i'm going to write it as d of n plus m the whole square is going to be equal to 4 into r into n plus m is going to be equal to 4 into r into n plus m into lambda divided by mu so i have two expressions one and i have another expression which is there that is equal to 2 this one gives me the diameter of the nth ring and this gives me the diameter of the n plus mth ring for a short while let us assume that i am plotting these values out over here in terms of a graph so these are the ring numbers and these are the corresponding squares of the diameters and the line turns out to be linear so what is the slope of this line in order to find out the slope of this particular line let us find out what are the points so in this case it is n plus m is the ring number and the diameter is going to be equal to d plus m square over here 
this is going to be n is the ring number and the diameter square is going to be equal to dn square. Now I try to find out the slope of this particular expression. So the slope of this expression is going to be equal to, slope is equal to d square n plus m minus of d square n upon m plus n minus of n. And this is going to be equal to d square into n plus m minus of d square upon n divided by m. And that's going to be equal to your slope. The fact that we know that your value of d square is actually going to be equal to 4 into r into, if this is n, it's going to be equal to n into lambda divided by mu. So what I want is an expression for d n square divided by n. So this is going to be equal to 4 r into lambda divided by mu. So the slope, if I compare these two expressions, the slope is going to be equal to 4 into r into lambda divided by mu. The expression states that your lambda value is going to be equal to d square n plus m minus of d square n divided by m and to that I am going to add a value over here that is mu and this is going to be get divided by 4 upon r 4 into r. This equation means that if I know the diameter of the n plus n ring, the square of that, and if I know the diameter of the n ring, the square of that, and if I know the difference in the ring numbers, that is m, if I know the refractive index, and if I know the radius of curvature of the plano convex surface, then I will be able to determine the value of that particular lambda that produced the particular Newton's rings pattern. Also, in addition to that, I can also use this same expression to find out the value of the refractive index of the medium that exists between the plano convex lens and the flat surface. So this way, you can actually utilize the Newton's rings pattern to determine the unknown wavelength that is being utilized to find or rather to display the interference pattern or to find out the refractive index of the medium. Sincere thanks students for watching this particular video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and do subscribe to Ikeda. Thanks a lot.